So darling, you're looking very sexy this morning. Let's see what the uh, what's, what's the final final accoutrement of the uh, of the turquoise bikini outfit today. Oh, it's an industrial glove. One piece of put my oh. beautiful hand into this thing. Oh, I can't it moss in it. <laughs> It's a little bit like one of those military sex calendars, you know. She's dressed up in camouflage gear holding an M16 <laughs> looking old. <laughs> all right, anchors away. The delay in getting the port engine repaired made getting to the Hui in Fort Myers on time really tight. We needed to travel the fastest possible route to Florida. There were a couple of options. The conventional and shortest route, north via the Abacos and across to Port St Lucie, followed by a 100 mile motor along the Intracoastal Waterway or ICW, and the unconventional route south around Andros Island. It's 10% longer at 500 miles and strewn with hazards. We decided to go this way. An extra 50 miles of sailing is always better than 100 miles of motoring. But there would be no dotted lines on the chart to follow this time, and a lot of very shallow water. Before we could start, we left our anchorage to pay a final visit to Georgetown. Any sand on it? Yeah. Can it just be washed off by motoring? I'm going to poke it off. Nice one. Thank you. Hey everyone, a quick update from Mongolia. We've added a new reward on Patreon. Now you can watch long play videos with extended scenes and bonus scenes to our regular weekly videos. In other news, YouTube are making non-skippable advertising available to all creators. I'm excited for this part. The ability to turn on non-skippable ads for your videos in the past, it's been something that's only been available to sort of a select few. What we're doing is we're going to start rolling it out to everyone who's in the YouTube Partner Program. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, uh, no. I think this is a really bad idea for your YouTube viewing experience. And here at Lucky Fish, we will not be putting on non-skippable adverts on our videos. So if you want to see a lot less of this sort of hype, What's up, insiders? If you want to learn how you could potentially make more money from advertising revenue, watch this video. Then please, head on over to our Patreon page, check out the rewards and help support our videos. More money? More uh, money, more uh, money, uh, more money, more uh, money, more uh, money! The nice way. Thank you. So we've got four, five jobs to do when we get to Georgetown and then we can move away tonight, yeah? Yeah. What is, what's, what's five jobs? You know, well, the most important thing, I guess, is to get some red meat. <laughs> yes. And the weather report. And the uh, tide information for next week. And you're going to email your niece. She might come and join us in Florida, which is exciting. And I'm going to write to what and see and just let them know that we haven't dropped off the face of the earth and we love the unit. So, that's it. Five jobs. Okay, not so hard. With the jobs done, 
we anchored off a deserted beach at Stocking Island. Where are we going? Oh, didn't you know it's our own island? It is. Oh, <laughs> it is. Our beach. Look at this shallow water. To the complete surprise of both of us, I didn't lose the drone and we left first thing in the morning. We left Stocking Island this morning uh, after nearly a week in Elizabeth Harbour. We had a great time there. Some nights we stayed with other boats, other nights we found anchorages which we had all to ourselves. Last night was really special. We were on a beautiful beach. The wind dropped away, it calmed down and we flew the drone for the first time. Right now we're en route from Stocking Island, heading north up Exuma Sound. We're looking for a cut to take uh, ourselves back into the bank side on the west so we can go around the north point of Great Exuma Island and proceed westwards across the tongue of the ocean to Andros Island and then across to Key West. It promises to be a pretty uh, interesting route. It's not one that's well sailed. There's certainly not much written about it. I've found a couple of blogs with some waypoints of people that have done routes similar to this, but certainly not the same. We're going west out of Great Exuma and there's a lot of rocks and coral bommies and shallow water to watch. It's 360 miles from uh, where we began this morning to Key West and uh, I think there's about 20 or 25 odd waypoints just to get across there so this is probably the most um, detailed navigation that we've done so far but in the meantime we're having a drag race um, Tiki 38's been sailing against a uh, Lipari 41 from Fontaine Peugeot we're flying a full foresail and full main, wing and wing at the moment, the jib's useless so we've rolled that away. We're doing about four and a half knots and about 11 knots of wind, dead downwind. And the Lipari 41's been flying a very pretty asymmetric. They've been flying that for the last two hours and uh, their relative position to us hasn't changed so Anyway, that's an interesting comparison between two completely different boats. We're flying two completely different downwind rigs with no real difference in speed. We re-entered the bank's side and were stunned by the colour of the water. We just had to anchor and take a moment before rushing out of the observers. by not losing the drone on the first flight, we had to have a go at landing on the boat.
two from two, this was starting to look easy. Just jammed at the end there, Dave. It just jammed at the end of that. I couldn't quite get the last bit, the uh, chain's full. After raising the anchor, we continued our journey inside the banks towards the north end of Great Exuma Island. So far so good, we haven't bumped anything. Pretty shallow though, it's um, not much deeper than two metres most of the way, so far from the soldiers cut. We only draw one metre, so we're good. Mostly have uh, we've got 1.3 under the keel at the moment. And it's an ebbing tide, so we do need to be a bit careful. Rubicon? Rubicon? Yeah. Anchored behind the island. A square rock, it's called. Is this square rock? Square rock. You can say something if you want. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh yeah, it's all little steps isn't it? Just yeah. take one step at a time and hopefully we can complete all these little legs between the waypoints without any difficulty. Good luck. Good luck. Back there. Close actually. Oh, that one? Okay. I thought I'd just uh, record a quick wrap up video for the day. We've uh, just passed well, we're just passing into the tongue of the ocean on the west side of Great Exuma Island. We've had pretty much a trouble-free uh, passage across the banks. Most of it was charted. Uh, the last bit wasn't. And so there was a, just a little bit of tension there as we passed south of what looked to be the last of the charted rocks in an area of shifting sandbars really didn't know what depth we were going to see but it turned out fine um, we had more or less six meters of water under the keel as we went through that area and since then the depths have gradually been dropping away it's currently about 37 meters and shortly it'll drop to over a thousand meters as we pass into the toto or tongue of the ocean and then we'll have a passage of around 45 miles or so overnight and uh, we expect to arrive there around dawn which will be ideal as we then uh, will either anchor behind a key for a few hours and get some rest and wait for the sun to come up high enough in the sky so we can uh, eyeball navigate our way across South Andros the bank and uh, the various rocks that have been charted there. Hopefully that goes smoothly. We've got a great breeze. Most of the day it's been 10 to 15 knots from the southwest. We've been hoping that it would swing a little bit to the southeast this evening as forecast and it has. It's picked up a little. It's uh, about 15 steady now. Boats doing between six and a half and seven and a half knots. We've got the wind about 45 to 50 degrees off the bow, the apparent wind going along on fairly flat seas and what really idyllic sailing conditions. The moon, I don't know if you can see it just behind me, it rose about half an hour ago. It's about four or five days past the full moon. It'll be nice to have that company tonight. Aside from that, it's warm, it's beautiful. We're looking forward to seeing the uh, change in the colour in the morning from deep blue tongue of the ocean to the back to the turquoise again as we cross the South Andros bank. So I was just about to take some rest after what's been a long day uh, so she can do her watch in a couple of hours. That's about all. Well, it's 6.30 in the morning and it's sunrise at West Toto, or the west side of the Tongue of the Ocean. We made the passage last night quite quickly. We had full main and full foresail and jib 
for uh, most of the night, uh, making good progress, and then it became obvious we were going to arrive here too early, so we dropped the main, quietened the boat down a bit. We're still doing six and a half knots. We got here around about half an hour ago, and we've just hove to. Boat's sitting quite quietly. It's drifting at around about uh, a knot or a fraction under, slightly away from the edge of the bank. So we're just going to chill here for an hour or two, get some rest, wait for the sun to get a little higher and then make a decision about where we're going to enter the bank. Uh, there's a couple of choices we've got, either dolly cut or uh, another sort of semi-uncharted area to the south that looks clear but I'm not sure how much in the way of soundings has been done through there and all the rocks kind of stop in a straight line which looks suspiciously like it came to the edge of a sheet and didn't get digitised. We might skip that second option and take Dolly Cut, which looks to be quite well charted. I'm going to put the Navionics card in in a minute and just do some comparisons between that and these uh, Explorer charts or the CMAP charts. That's all from us. A little bit tired this morning, but uh, another leg completed. Another stage in this journey. Cheers. Sunday the 14th of May and we're on the Great Bahama Bank. Uh, we arrived here this morning, uh, we hove to just off the bank for a couple of hours, got some rest, waited for the sun to come up, decided which pass we'd use to come in or cut uh, and we used Dolly's cut and it worked out fine. Uh, we didn't have anything less than six meters under the keel as we came through the middle of that and then uh, all day we've been in variable winds from sort of 15 to 18 knots southwest right on the nose however we've had an incoming tide during the morning so we got about one knot assistance as we arrived uh, that's now turned against us and we've probably got less than half a knot against us with the ebb the wind has completely died as you can see it's a mill pond out there incredible clear sea we're probably in about six meters of water at the moment and it looks like you could reach down and touch the sea fans and starfish and bits and pieces that we float past. I tried recording some comments this morning about two or three in the morning regarding the passage across the tongue of the ocean but that description will end up in the bin because I uh, had a quick look at it this morning and I found one JPEG. The clouds are certainly different to what they have been over the last week in the Bahamas where we've just seen a very stable weather system with cumulus clouds, no high level stuff at all. There was a big high pressure zone that was controlling everything. Now there's a change come through, an upper level trough has moved across from the states. Apparently most of the activity is to the north of us, I hope so. However we can see a lot of uh, high, high level cloud um, we've been seeing that for the last two days and now um, we're watching uh, thunderstorm build-ups over Andros Island to our north, however they seem to have dissipated today, thankfully. We watched a wave of them form to the south of us only an hour or two ago and they've dissipated as well, so things are quite changeable in the atmosphere at the moment. We're not taking this calm lightly, it could change again tonight so we'll be very prepared if things do turn wet and ugly. We're doing about four and a half knots, we've got about 14 miles to go until we're in the clear, until we're past the last of the rock heads south of Andros Island. And once we're at that point we can uh, 
hopefully if there's a bit of breeze, hoist sail, even if it's out of the southwest, we should be able to tight reach across that. The next waypoint will be about 104 miles to the west of us en route to Key West. Um, it's a place called Anguilla Key, which is on uh, Key Cell Bank. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of real estate and a lot of, um, a lot of geography going on between the Bahamas and Florida on this southern route. It's not particularly well travelled. Uh, we'll be sure to document um, our waypoints for others in the future. Uh, but um, just of note, we haven't seen anything less than six metres most of the way across Bahama Bank. Uh, obviously we've traced out a path that weaves its way between the rocks, the charted rocks. Um, but there was one spot that was uncharted which got down to two and a half metres below our keel which would make it three and a half metres deep. Uh, still wouldn't be a concern to most cruising monohulls. So yeah, it's um, not as bad as it looks on the charts so far. Anyway, all the best everyone. Until next time, cheers. If you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you to all our wonderful patrons for supporting our videos. And thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the Bahamas Beach. Bye.